hello everyone, my name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Um, this is take two on <laughs> the caddis pattern I wanted to do. I just tied the whole thing and forgot to hit the record button. Oh well, stuff happens. So that's what I'm going to be tying today is a uh, small little caddis pattern. Uh, lots of movement in this fly. Uh, it's kind of an attractor, kind of a knot, um, but you'll see it's an excellent little pattern. So here we go. I'll try this again. <laughs> so in the vise, we've got a, a Hens BL564 in a size 12 and extra strong. So it's a little bit heavier uh, gauge, so it, it'll sink a little bit better. Uh, I'll be using Zemperfly um, Nano Silk in uh, green 12 watt. I'll be using some um, Zemperfly Nymph Dub in the Caddis Amber for the body. I'll be using some red hollow tinsel for the rib and I will be using some CDC in a green um, greeny kind of a olive green for the uh, wing and then a little bit of this for the uh, peacock ice dub for the leggy head area alrighty so let's get going gotta make sure I'm recording yeah I am <laughs> so just waxed my thread Start my thread on right behind the eye. Now I just got to make sure I don't go too fast because, you know, I already did this. So, alrighty. So now I am going to tie on my hollow tinsel in the red. This is uh, the one thirty second. Um, I actually this size and the extra small is what I like using for this. Um, it gives it uh, the extra small gives a little bit more allows a little bit more of the nymph dub to come through so so I want to go right around that corner with this pattern come back to the front uh, I'm gonna get a piece of my nymph dub off the roll here and I'm just gonna tie it you can see there's a central cord on it you want to make sure you get that central cord so I like it going because I want a little bit of extra bulk at the front here anyway I'll tie it in with a little bit of extra stick and past and then I'll fold that over because I kind of want a bit of a, a bulkier body there anyway so and that may make sure that this is tied in really well so I'm just gonna go all the way back keep lifting this so I can see where I stopped with the hollow tinsel and then I'm gonna come all the way back up to the front here right to there I believe myself a a mill or two. Just give myself a quick little whip finish. Take the nymph dub. Give it a bit of a, like I just did, like a, just, you know, brush it back and forth a little bit, just to puff it out a bit. You don't have to, because you'll be, we'll be pulling this out later on anyway. So now touching wraps. I'm going to get my thread out of the way here, because it's being a pain in the butt. Uh, touching wraps, just going to come all the way forward. This will all get pulled out anyway, like I said later. So, And then up here, I'm going to come all the way to the front to where I want to stop right there. And then I'm going to go back just a bit. This uh, thread's going to be in a real pain in the butt today. And then back up here again right up there one two three one two three nip it off now this first wrap here i want right at on the bare hook and then it can be a bit of a pain in the butt trying to get it to come around this corner because this stuff wants to slip so you gotta be tight and you gotta keep it tight and it's the odd time you'll rip this hollow tinsel so you just got to be careful with it right be patient be slow which is not my forte but so I've tied that in make sure that doesn't slip on me two three in front Get that off Thank you. 
because this hasn't been a, the greatest uh, experience this time tying this one because I keep on forgetting to record or I bump the camera and it goes out of focus. It's just been one of them days. So a little bit of a whip finish. Then I'm going to take my dubbing brush. Just going to pull out that nymph dub. I, want this, I don't want it too, too much, but I do definitely want it pulled out. Um, I still want to be able to see that red in, in behind it. Right, but I do want this stuff to be pulled out. I want that movement, right? So, there we go. Alrighty, so now the CDC part. And now, depending on the pack of CDC you got, you can go with one, two, three, or four feathers, um, depending on on the quality. Uh, I'm going to go with three here because I got two that have a slightly shorter barbules and one that's got a longer barbule so I just want I want to have that movement so now I could do the split thread and and wind it but I don't want that wet fly style I want more of a wing style so like I said I'm just gonna pull these all together I want them to be about as long as the as the hook so about there so I'm just gonna hold that Sorry if my fingers are in the way, guys, but I gotta hold this tight. Wrap, pull down, wrap five or six times, making sure it's looking okay. That's not looking bad at all. Keep moving my vise here. It's not to. Uh... So nip off the waist. Don't throw that away. Great dubbing. Okay, just clean this up a little bit. Then I'm going to take this to put a little bit of wax on my thread. Take ever so slight little tiny pinch of this black peacock dubbing, ice dubbing. That's a little too much. Just want the tiny little noodle here. There's a couple of reasons. One, I want to have the, I want it to kind of uh, represent legs, but I also kind of want to just hide the tie-in point. So but this will represent legs nicely once it's once I pull it out. So there again, and we'll take my whip finishing tool. Just give it a bit of a, pull that back if there's anything in the way. Before turn whip finish. Rip that off. Take your dubbing brush again and just Give that black peacock stuff a pull out. And there is your finished fly. I said it's gonna give you lots of movement with that CDC, that uh, nymph double move and, and get slick and kind of look natural. And then you've got these, the, the legs uh, for that, that black peacock uh, ice dub there, it'll be legs, and it's got a bit of flash in it, and that, that CDC will, will gather light, and uh, it, it's a really good pattern. So, yeah, so give that one a shot. And like I said, if you've got this the, the extra small red, use that, or the orange. Um, I find that it works really, really well as well with, with an orange um, uh, rib instead of the red. Uh, the red works, but the orange, I find, depending on the time of year, the orange works really well, so... Um, if you want this for a river, do exactly the same thing as I just did, but put a bead on it or put underbody lead. Um, works in the rivers as well. So, alrighty, well, give that one a try. If you like my videos, give her a thumbs up. Uh, if you if you've subscribed, thank you. If you haven't, please consider doing so, and we'll uh, see you guys all on the next tying video. Tie lines, everyone. <laughs>